guys, I think I have found my new favorite handheld. Now that's saying a lot because originally it was this. This is the Digi Retro Boy. It's basically like a Game Boy Advance, even plays your Game Boy Advance cartridges, and you can add an SD card to play some ROMs. It was pretty good. Um, comes in at about £100, but there's something new that I've got my hands on, and it is this. This is the Clockwork Game Shell. It's basically a RetroPie slash hackable handheld game device that you make yourself. So I've actually got two. I've got the built one over here. This one isn't built, but I'm actually giving this away over on Twitter. So there will be a link below if you want to get involved with that. But this is the packaging. Very, very nice. These guys were originally on Indiegogo, I think. Uh, loads of people backed them, and now they're officially out for you to buy. So this is the packaging. I won't take it all out. I'll show you a few things because it is the one I'm giving away. And it comes in this really cool like folder looking kind of package you get all your shells you get the manual here which is really easy to do uh, you could probably give this to a child to do if they if they're if they're into that um, it's very very easy the step-by-step -step guide is all just pictures and stuff um, so you're not gonna have a problem doing it and I haven't had much experience doing all this uh, but I managed to do it fine in about an hour and a half so it comes in these little packages as well so all the bits uh, but you're seeing it on your screen now because I've actually done that before and I built uh, my version so let's put this away I'm absolutely loving this packaging it's really really cool and perfect for a gift as well the guys over at clockwork have done a cracking job so i'm giving this one away over on twitter links below you can get involved and grab it yourself so here is my version this is i'll do a little zoomy zoomy for you Whoop. This is the red version, I'm loving it. The other one is yellow. And we'll just take a quick look at the build quality and the overall kind of design and features of the Clockwork Game Shell. And as you can tell, it's definitely Game Boy-esque. I absolutely love it. Um, on top, you've got kind of like your buttons, your ports where you charge it, charge it. And it does come with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for you to play with your headphones because it is also an MP3 player as well. Um, on the front, you've got a 2.7 inch screen and the screen is absolutely stunning. One of my favorite features, it's bright, it's saturated, and it just plays the games perfectly in, a, in full brightness. So when you're in the car or somewhere dark, you're fine. You're gonna have no Game Boy or Game Boy Color problems uh, with no backlight here. On the front, you've got your menu and shift button. Your shift just allows you to add extra capabilities like get into the volume buttons, etc. while you're in game. You've obviously got your D-pad and your X, Y, A, B. And then down here is obviously your speaker grill. Now on the back, this is where it gets a little complicated and I love the transparency of this shell because basically, you make this yourself. I'll show you that now. So to get into the actual uh, hardware of this clockwork, you've got this cool little like lock mechanism here, which you just twist and that should come off like so. And you do it to the other one. Give it a little twist, which way? That way, pow. And then you can get right into the innards. And it's a modular hacking system, uh, which means you can... Uh, Basically just make it bit by bit and then connect it all together. So I don't really wanna pop these out. So here you have it. Here is the insides of your game shell. So if I wanted to, I could take out the speakers like so. I could uh, take that off of the, uh, the disenchant disenchanting disattachment. That's the word I wanted. Uh, and here is your programmable keypad as well. I don't wanna take this all out, I'll do that at the end. And then here is your screen. And it's all got these little compartments as well. There's basically like your main board as well that it all connects to. And then the battery pack behind the, uh, the keypad here. And then simply to get this all back on, you just chuck on the face plate like so. Give it a few clicks. And then you basically put on these little locking mechanisms here, give it a twist, do the same with the other side like that, and you're ready to go. Now, on the back as well, you have two different back shells, one without like this Lego design piece, uh, because you can actually attach stuff yourself, and I wouldn't be surprised if Game Shell come out with a ton of different attachments uh, for upcoming features. So for example here, these are actually uh, bumpers. So if I actually turn this on a sec, you'll be able to see this light up. I don't think I've put that in right. There we go. 
So on the back here, you can see these lighting up. These are basically just your bumper triggers. So if you've got like Game Boy Advance games or other retro games, you can actually configure these buttons here. Uh, there's five buttons here into whatever buttons you want, to be honest with you. Uh, the great thing about this handheld is that you can customize it to the way you want. Right, so let's jump in to the actual like software, etc. You've kind of seen how you make it, you've seen the, the design and the and the feature the hardware features, but what is the actual software and the gameplay like? So as you can see here, here is the Clockworks user interface. Very clean, minimalist, I dig it, it's all you really need. I could go into settings. Settings, there's a ton of them. So you've got like your power options. This does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is really cool. Uh, so you can update this all the time via Wi-Fi and you do the same to actually install games, which you'll get to in a minute. Sound volume, backlight, brightness, storage, time zone, languages, notifications, your update, your abouts, your button layout. So if you wanted to go into this, you can actually change your button layouts um, however you want, um, which is quite good. So you can, you can hack this into, into whatever way you want. So there's all your settings. Like in terms of um, like specs and stuff like that, I never really usually go into that because I'm more of a just your basic kind of consumer, uh, but link below to their site so you can go see all of these specs. So let's jump straight into some gameplay. Now I've installed some ROMs on here already. As you well know, I'm a big Game Boy fan. Um, and it does come with some pre-installed stuff like Cave Story. It even comes with Doom. You're probably wondering what? Yes, this runs Doom. Oh no, he got me, he got me good. So there's a little bit of doom there and all I do is simply press menu and then I can quit game. So there is a couple more pre-installed games for you, nothing crazy. You've got your music player here, which if you go into, you'll have all of your MP3s. And like I mentioned before, there is a headphone jack. Uh, so you can use this as an MP3 player if you want. And then there's Tiny Cloud, which you will need to use. This is how you install your ROMs over Wi-Fi. So you connect your Wi-Fi up to your, your Wi-Fi, obviously. Uh, and then you just chuck in your IP address, your username and password, and you'll be able to use FileZilla and other file uh, software like that to get into your storage system and then you can just click and drag over um, your files and your ROMs. So it's very easy uh, when you start getting into like your Mega Drive and PlayStation 1 ROMs, you do need to go into a bit more detail because you actually have to install emulators on here. But don't worry, I was a bit skeptical at first and didn't think I'd understand it because all of that stuff just confuses me, but it is quite straightforward. So if you're worried about that when picking one up, don't it's quite easy to use um, and it's very simple to install your roms um, so yeah so let's play some actual roms on here as you know i'm a big fan of game boy so what you do is you simply go into your retro games and it already comes up with a few um, emulators here and you can actually install more so if you wanted to instead of going into all the file backends which you have to do on some of this you can actually create these little app icons that you can go into as shortcuts so if you did want a playstation one or uh, an original game boy one you can install simple shortcuts on here so if i go into my game boy advance uh rom folder here you can see what i've got i've got emerald and fire red and the great thing about this is that it does remember your saves uh, I think I was meant to click on Fire Red there, but I might have played a bit of Emerald. And the speaker's pretty good as well. It's not the best, but it is uh, enough for you to kind of feel nostalgic. And it's very, very loud as well. I don't even know if this is up full blast. It is. But I simply hold Shift and I can turn it up or I can turn it down. Just look at that screen though. Look how crispy that is. Look how bright it is. The viewing angles can be a little weird, uh, but you won't be doing that because you'll be playing one player. Uh, but the screen is fabulous. Let me turn that down a bit. Emerald. Do I have a save? I do not have a save. 
So if I come out just by pressing menu, I can go straight into fire red, which I do have a save for. And you save it normally in game. You just go to your start section uh, as you would, and you'd have your, your save there, which is really, really cool. I love that. Don't want to be rest messing around with any back end stuff. So this is fire red. So this uh, screen is actually 320s by 320s, 320 is 320 is 320 by 240 resolution. So there's going to be no stretching uh, of this start. Just look at this screen. It's incredible. And there's my save already. I'm restored and comfortable. And then I can start playing. down so you don't hear that but like absolutely fine no screen tearing whatsoever like these game boy roms are absolutely perfect and i love it i love that i can play fire red on this thing and it works perfectly fine and it saves and everything Goodbye, Ratata. You're dead. Let me know in the comments below who's your first star is. Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirrel. So for me to save, I just simply go down, save, like that, override, and boom. The Clockwork Game Shell will know that that's your save, and you can load it as you normally would on a Game Boy, like so. And if I want to come out, just press menu, and I'm back into Clockworks user interface so let's try another rom for you guys we got my nes rom here we can go into whatever we want should we try um so you can actually favorite stuff as well if you go over so if i wanted to favorite um uh mega man i just press x is it x or is it a i think it was y but you can favorite stuff and put it in a different folder so if you were to have hundreds of roms in your library, you could just favor a few and uh, you're ready to go. So this is Mega Man. We're gonna go against Cut Man here. So I'll turn up the volume. Let's go. Ow. So Mega Man plays absolutely fine, perfectly. Sounds great too on this uh, little speakers in here. It's just a really nice feature to have, allowing you to go through any ROM you want. So you could take this on holiday and install tons of ROMs. Um, so if you wanted to go into a bit more detail, you wanted to install, for example, a Mega Drive ROM or a PlayStation ROM, which you can do, you actually have to go into FileZilla, make a ROMs folder, just title it Mega Drive or PlayStation 1, and then you have to go into this, which is RetroArch. This is uh, a bit of software that allows you to install emulators. So if you needed a Mega Drive emulator, which isn't already installed on here, you just basically download an emulator and you're ready to roll. So for example, if I wanted to go into an emulator, I'd go into load core, and this is one I've already downloaded. So this is a downloaded core called the Mega Drive. I can go into that, and then I just go into load content, so load the game, and I go into where my where I downloaded it, so home, um, Clockwork Pi, games, go down to my ROMs folder, which I used in FileZilla, go down to Mega Drive, and then I can choose what game I'd like. So I've got Mickey Mouse, Sonic and Knuckles, or I've got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. If I press Sonic the Hedgehog, it will load that in that emulator. It should load it up. 
boom. I've got Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on a Game Boy. Love it. And you can do the same with PlayStation 1 ROMs as well. So here is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 running on the Clockwork Game Shell. Look at that. Just look at that. Look at that screen. That is a stunning screen. You probably can't hear me over that volume, but just look how well this plays. Now, I think it is slowed down ever so slightly, but that might be because of the poor ROM that I've actually installed. Um, but, you know, just keep trying, find some good ROMs, and uh, you'll be playing Sonic the Hedgehog in no time. Boom. God, I love Sonic. I'm bad at it, but I love it. So there you have it. There's a look at a few of the ROMs. You've taken a peek at the design. And like, why, why do I love this? Now, let me just focus up, y'all. There's a few reasons why I love this. One, because when I was actually making it, I felt like it was, how do I explain this? It become, it became more materialistic to me and it meant a lot more to me. It's not you just like buy a Game Boy. This thing you actually had to spend a couple hours making, putting all the parts together. Uh, because I've showed you the video now, I might be able to actually slightly take this apart for you so you can kind of get an idea of how it looks inside. Um, because if I did that before the end of the video, I would have not been able to put it together. So, you obviously take off the faceplate, and you can get different colored faceplates. The one I'm giving away is obviously yellow. Um, so this, this is how it looks when you, uh, when you finally build it. And you can just take things apart. So here's the speaker. I can take that out using this cable here. Pow, there's the speaker, just taken that out. If you didn't want a speaker in it, you just take it out, put the game shell back on, and you're ready to roll, like so. Um, obviously, here is your keypad. So it's got two cables in here. I just take that out. I can take all these off, like so. Can I take that out? Yes, I can. It's a bit ickledy pickledy, but I can take the buttons off as well. That one's in tight. There's your screen, obviously with your um, ribbon cable that I don't want to mess with. You've got your battery in here. Then if you can see that, that's 1200 milliamps and that will give you several uh, hours play time, which is great. I haven't really had a problem as that's actually another one of the strong features. The battery time on this is superb. And then you obviously got the main board in here, there, which everything connects to. Um, there was no soldering involved, which I like. It's all simply connecting stuff. Um, with cables and slotting stuff in, but this was great fun. This was like Lego mixed with my love of Game Boys uh, and the fact that you've got like a little like actual Lego section on the back for you to add stuff that you want, it is great. So it's very, very modular. You can hack it. Uh, the community around it's great as well. They're making their own game specifically for this uh, handheld. So it's just great. It's absolutely great. I think you guys should uh, take a look at it and if you're looking at picking up a handheld in this price category, which is about 100 pounds, definitely check it out because it just feels great once you make it um, so there you have it there's my quick review slash I didn't unbox it but slash put together of the clockwork game shell my new favorite handheld that I'll be chucking in my bag when I go traveling so if you've got any questions hit me up in the comments below um, and yeah as per usual thanks for watching Big up Game Shell for sending this out. And don't forget the giveaway uh, over on Twitter as well. As per usual, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.